Hey everybody, Zach here from Reptile Creation, and tonight I'm in the reptile room again, getting ready for the leopard gecko breeding season. I paired off my female leopard geckos with the uh, males, firstly uh, on March 9th this month, so it's been about two weeks. Um, I can see the eggs developing in their abdomens. I'm going to show you guys that on the camera here pretty quick, but I'm going to get my incubator together, I'm going to show you the girls, and I'm going to show a few things about uh, sexing males and females, and I'll tell you guys about how long certain things take in the, in the development of eggs and between copulation and lay, laying the eggs and things like that. So, hope you want to learn something about breeding geckos today. So let's get going. So, firstly, I wanted to show you my uh, three geckos from last season. These geckos are about uh, eight months old now and this one here and uh, both both these two are females and they're both uh, large enough to breed now they're over 45 grams which is a minimum breeding weight but uh, this one here who's still a few grams lighter than 45 grams is the only one of the three that is uh, actually ovulating so I'm gonna try and show you guys the ovulation here so I had to readjust to get this to uh, show up on the camera. I'm hoping they're visible, but right here and right here, there's a little white spot with a pink circle around it. I, I hope that was... It might show up on the camera, maybe not, but that's uh, an ovulation, and like I said, she's not quite old enough to breed just yet. Uh, she's a little too light yet. So I'm just going to actually hope that she reabsorbs the... Uh, uh, ovulation and doesn't actually produce eggs. I'd rather her uh, keep that. Alright, so this is my high yellow hypo carrot tail. She's my female. Um, I had her paired off with my male uh, G project just over two weeks ago now and I'd like to show you the eggs developing in her abdomen. If you want to compare them to the uh, ovulations that you could see in the uh, the babies these ones you can really tell are turning into eggs. They're much larger and much more visible than the uh, just the the white spot with the pink circle around it. So um, that was about, like I said, two and, two and a half weeks after copulation. So she should be ready to lay eggs in, you know, uh, a week and a half to two weeks. All right, so here we have my incubator. This is a uh, little giant incubator. I used to have a fancier looking Exoterra incubator and it crapped out on me after one season. So I went with something a little simpler and it's been great. I was really pleased with it last season. And the uh, the way that all the uh, containers sit in it, it's a little bit more efficient than the way it was. I wasn't very pleased. It, it always let water out of the bottom. Out of It looks like a little mini fridge. I'm sure you guys have seen it before. So I've got a bucket of coconut fiber down here, and I'm going to be filling these up with some coconut fiber. Um, I can't say exactly how much I have, uh, how much water I have in this stuff, but I try and get it to the point where I make a ball like this, and it kind of holds its shape. And then I just, I don't want to be able to get any drops of water out of it. It's really... I can squeeze it as hard as I want, and I don't get any any actual uh, droplets of moisture. My hands are totally dry already, so I just make sure it's all leveled off. And uh, this stuff, you know, I show you it that it uh, kind of holds its shape, so it'll hold its shape for the eggs once I press my finger in here and set them in there. So I'll fill up the three of these because I have three different males, so I want to uh, separate each of those projects just uh, by container so I can label them separately. It's a really good way to keep track of everything. You don't want all the random different color mutations in one box and forgetting who's who. Okay, so I've got the three containers set up here and I've got these lids. They've got a few little holes so there's some air exchange. Uh, but essentially these containers will keep their moisture pretty pretty well. 
I may need to add a tiny little bit of water uh, at some point through the breeding season, but I, I don't think I did that more than once last year in one of these containers. So uh, it should be good like this. I'll be incubating for male and female in this uh, incubator this season, hopefully. Um, you gotta incubate a little warmer for males around the uh, 87 to 89 degree uh, Fahrenheit mark and uh, females you go between 80 and 83 degrees. Uh, so essentially um, after the first two weeks at an incubation temperature the sex of the egg should be determined and uh, then you can change the temperature to get the opposite sex as well. So I'm thinking about trying to test that out because I would like to get some males from this uh, breeding season as well. So uh, that's my incubator. Next up, I'll show you some of my boys. All right, everybody. So this is my Bell Albino. Um, he's been paired off with my Max Snow this year, and I just wanted to show you guys how to sex geckos. So if you can see right here, in the center of it, right in between his legs, there is the prefemoral pores. They're much more pronounced on the males than on the females, so uh, as you can tell, uh, they're very visible. And then at the base of his tail here, there are the hemipenal bulges. And those are bulges that show that he has his hemipenes inverted inside him. So when they get pressed out into the female, they uh, invert. And then uh, I'm just going to go grab... Uh, my Max Snow that was his mate for this season. And I'll show you guys the, uh, the prefemoral pores on a female leopard gecko. As you can see, there's almost, almost no, uh, as you can see, there's almost no hemipenal bulges here. And the prefemoral pores, although being visible, are, are almost not there at all. They're just, much much more visible on the males so that's how you can tell the difference and uh i hope you guys enjoyed me showing you how to take care of some ge leopard geckos during the breeding season all right so that was some of the key things you need to be looking for in your geckos when you're trying to breed them and uh hopefully you guys enjoyed if you have any questions shoot down in the comments click like subscribe and have a good one guys